In this video, we're going to learn about the first derivative test. So we just learned how to determine the intervals of increase and decrease. And we also know how to find the critical values. So really what we're going to do is put those together to determine where to find the extrema. And that's what the first derivative test is all about. We're trying to find the minimums and maximums of a function. So in our last video, we did this ex exact example and we said this one was increasing to zero and then decreasing to one and then increasing after that. We also talked about the fact that there was a horizontal tangent at zero and at one. And so that's really what the first derivative test is about. It's saying if you have a function that goes from increasing to decreasing, then that point at which it switches is going to be a maximum. So obviously increasing to decreasing means there's a max. If it goes from decreasing to increasing, there's going to be a minimum. So decreasing to increasing, there's going to be a minimum. So again, there's a relative max at the point zero, zero, because if F is increasing to the left and decreasing right after that, and a relative min at one, because it's decreasing to the left and increasing to the right. So the first derivative test basically tells us exactly that. We want to find the critical numbers on the open interval, and we're going to find all the intervals where f of x is increasing and decreasing. And if f prime of x changes from negative to positive, so the slope goes from negative to positive, then there must have been a relative minimum at that point where it switched. And if f prime of x changes from positive to negative, there must have been a relative maximum at that point. Now, if we have the same sign at both sides, then it's neither a relative min nor a relative max. And that will happen sometimes. Let's do this question together. And notice I did not give you a polynomial function because it's good to practice functions other than polynomial functions. But I can say that f of x is continuous on the entire interval negative infinity to infinity because this is just the cubed root so we don't have to worry about any negative values or um, a denominator or anything like that so it's continuous everywhere step two find the derivative f prime of x remember here we're going to use the chain rule two-thirds x squared minus four to the negative one-third and then chain rule says x squared minus 4 has a derivative, so take it times the derivative of that, so 2x. Let's clean this up a little bit. We have a fraction. In our numerator, we have 2x times 2, or 4x. In our denominator, we have 3, and then we have x squared minus 4 to the positive 1 third. So that is our derivative. Now let's find the critical numbers. And keep in mind, critical numbers are where 0 is equal to the derivative. And in this case, I would take each side times the derivative, giving me 0 equals 4x, so x is 0. But we also have to worry about where the function is undefined. So where would it be undefined? When the denominator is equal to 0. Well, when is the denominator equal to 0? when x is equal to plus or minus 2. So again, feel free to show that work. I would take 3x squared minus 4 to the 1 third and set it equal to 0, divide each side by 3, cube each side, add 4 to each side, giving me x squared minus 4 equals 0, x equals um, 4, x squared equals 4, and then x equals plus or minus 2. I didn't show all of that because I need the room for the other work that we're going to do. So we have negative infinity. And again, we have to go from least to greatest. So negative 2 is the least, then negative 2 to 0, then 0 to 2, and then 2 to infinity. So here we have four intervals. Remember, when we're plugging them back in to find intervals of increase, decrease, we have to use the derivative function. So I'm plugging them back into this function. 
So if I'd used, say, a negative 3, I would get a negative value on the top. I would get a positive value on the bottom, resulting in a negative. If I plugged in negative 1, I would get a negative value on the top and also a negative value on the bottom. So that's positive, negative over negative. If I plugged in positive 1, I would have a positive over a negative. And if I plugged in, say, 3, I would have a positive over a positive. Now, notice this one said, don't find the um, intervals, but we want you to find the relative extrema. So now we're going to use that first derivative test that says this is going from decrease to increase. And so there is an, a minimum here at x equals negative 2. And this one's going from increasing to decreasing, so there is a maximum at x equals 0. And this is going from decreasing to increasing, so there's a minimum at x equals 2. But when we're finding the extrema, we actually have to find the whole thing, which means the coordinates, so min and max. Now, this is what trips people up often. These are the x values of my minimums and maximums, but in order to find the y values, remember that I have to plug them back into my original function because I'm looking for points on the graph. So the minimums would be at negative 2 and at positive 2, and I have to find the y values, and the max would be at 0, and I have to find the y value. So let's plug in negative 2. Negative 2 squared is... 4 minus 4 is 0, 0 to the 2 thirds is 0. Same thing would happen with positive 2, 4 minus 4 is 0 to the 2 thirds is 0. Now if I plug in 0, I get 0 minus 4, so that's negative 4. And again, negative 4 to the 2 thirds means negative 4 squared or 16, and then the cubed root of that, which would be the cubed root of 16 or 2 cubed root of 2. Um, and then typically when we're writing this, we would go ahead and write this as 2 cubed root of 2. But when we graph it, we would find a decimal because that would help us to actually find the point a little bit better. So it's about 2.52. But again, notice in the graph, my min is at negative 2, 0 and positive 2, 0. And I have a max at 0, 2.52. Here's a question for you to try on your own. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. We will start by talking about g of x and whether or not it is continuous. So in fact, g of x is continuous everywhere except x equals 0, because that would be a problem with 1 over x. That would give us an undefined fraction. So everywhere except x equals 0, which means when we are dividing up our domain, we have to use x equals 0. Then let's find g prime of x, which is going to be the derivative of 2x, which is 2. And remember, 1 over x is just x to the negative 1. And so that would give us negative 1x to the negative 2, which is 2 minus 1 over x squared. So that's our derivative. So now we have to set that equal to 0. 0 is equal to 2 minus 1 over x squared. Now we're going to kind of run out of room here, so we have to mathematically think, right? We have to do some of this in our head. So if I added 2 to each side, or sorry, subtracted 2 from each side and then divided by negative 1, that's going to give me 2 equals 1 over x squared. I multiply each side by x squared, so really I get 2x squared equals 1. I divide each side by 2 and then take the square root, so I have x is equal to the square root of 1 half. And again, that would be plus or minus. And we typically don't leave radicals in our denominator. So we're going to have x equals plus or minus radical 2 over 2. So we're going to use that point, or those two points, excuse me, as well as x equals 0 when we're dividing our domain. So for our domain, we're going to take negative infinity to negative radical 2 over 2. We're going to take negative radical 2 over 2 to 0. We're going to take 0 to radical 2 over 2. And we're going to take radical 2 over 2 to infinity. So those are my intervals. And instead of 
doing all of the math yourself, which you definitely can do. One way to make this a little bit easier is to plug the derivative function, which is this function right here, into your calculator. So I plugged it in for y2, and then I just evaluated it at negative 5, which told me that this was a positive value, at negative 1 fourth, which told me this interval is negative, ne positive 1 fourth, and positive 5. So I was able to determine that pretty quickly without having to do much mathematical work myself. So feel free to do that yourself. Uh, keep in mind that this is going from increasing to decreasing. So we have negative, I'm sorry, a positive, a maximum there. This one is neither. And this would be neither even if the um, decreasing or increasing changed because we can't have a minimum or maximum at x equals 0 because our function is not defined at that point. And here we go from negative to positive, so obviously we're going to have a min. So our max is going to be at negative radical 2 over 2, and then we're going to plug in negative radical 2 over 2 to evaluate g of negative radical 2 over 2. So I have 2 times negative radical 2 over 2, and then plus 1 over negative radical 2 over 2. Obviously, this gives me negative radical 2. This would flip, so it would be 2 over negative radical 2, but we would rationalize the denominator, and we would really just end up with negative radical 2. So I have negative 2 radical 2. So that's the exact answer, which is important, but also it's okay for you to take a look at the decimal equivalent because that's really how you're going to be able to determine where to put your point when you're using this to plot points on your line. So notice I would get the exact same thing. So my minimum, I'm sorry, my maximum is negative radical 2 over 2 comma negative 2 radical 2 and my minimum would be the same except for different signs. So my minimum is radical 2 over 2 and 2 radical 2. So that is our graph. And again, I've plotted that for you so that you can see that those are the points. I do also want to point out what it looks like at x equals 0. Right here, we have an asymptote. Just as we did with finding intervals of increase or decrease in our function, we want to do the same for intervals of concavity, which we'll use the second derivative.